Okay. There is a lot of details, but there is a few important points. And, and the reason I use a lot of photos is picture is worth a thousand words and it will help us understand concepts better than a lot of words. This is one of them. So remember when we were at the, this is called the immortality formula uh, or the enlightenment formula. And it's it's existing in this uh, Huashan mountain, the, the dragon king uh, temple there. This is the original formula of how to, to become an immortal in the, in the Taoist tradition. So this part here, where the boy is in the, right there in the heart. And there is constellation of stars here. I know this could be a bit, seem to be complex, but it's actually a very important concept. And if we are, once we realize that, it really will give us an interesting place to be. So there's a constellation here and there's a little boy standing there and that's the heart, right? So there's a child there and it's kind of looking at the universe from a different perspective. Okay, and that's where we, we want to begin because that's a very important place to be. So they call it the ox boy sees the dipper, which is the big dipper, which is very significant in the ancient traditions, but he sees it from the other side of the sky, you see? So the perspective is this, we, we see ourselves always as these little beings and the universe is out there and the astrology is just hitting us all over the place and the star alignments and the solar activities and things are just knocking us all over the place and we are helpless and we're just, yeah, we just get like a leaf in the, in the wind. But we are not there. We are not on that level. Our higher self is way, way, way above any of these influences, whether it's the influence of the astrology, the influence of biorhythms, anything that we feel, oh, I'm, I'm going through a bad period now because my biorhythm is low or because the astrology is not aligned properly. Well, we placed ourselves below the stars. Our higher self is higher than the stars. And that is the the... The purpose of ascension is really to at least to connect with our higher self, which is above all these influences. And then from there, create the proper conditions for our state of being in a 3D world to invite and to host our higher self or to, to merge with it. And we become our, our full self, really. So that perspective is very, if we actually forget about everything else and just look at this, that we want to be here above the influence of any of these things. We are not victims. We are not uh, just to be dragged left and right by whatever is happening. We are above that. Um, now, it's okay to understand it's like, okay, there's an alignment now and stuff is happening because we're dealing with people who are subject to that. Yes, and we are healers or we are supporting them. They could be the closest people to us. But for us personally, we, we this is... Uh, we should be in a different perspective than there, yeah? So that's a very uh, necessary place to be. And uh, very interesting in the uh, Rockefeller uh, Center in uh, New York, there is this picture of uh, Prometheus and he's flying above the constellations of the Zodiac, which in essence is communicating the same thing. So all the ancient traditions were telling us you, your place, our place is much higher than the influence of any of this stuff. And these are kind of parts of the control matrix that got weaved together to support and to lock that structure that exists of control. But we are way above that. Now we can, if we don't know that, if our picture of reality is that, oh, the horoscope is affecting us and this and that, okay, so that's gonna be our reality. But we are way above that. And with that in mind, the we can be talking more about this in the future if anybody is interested, but there are teachers that, uh, that work with the timeline. So you would move into the future, see the thing completed and then return back and it's done. And it requires this rising above any uh, control mechanisms that exist, yeah? Okay, so now, now that we know that, um, we really cut out all the cords that are around that are holding us to any limiting things because we are that free. We can rise above any of these control mechanisms. So we have three minds, head, heart, and gut. 
galactic heart and earth so this is where our higher all, all this is where we exist in our uh, heart and if you look at it you have three chakras below three chakras above and they meet right there and that's basically uh, our main engine of uh, consciousness uh, we know about these centers, they are gathering and storing and transforming life force. So each one of these centers deals with a certain part of the spectrum of consciousness. Here's the higher, the upper Dantian. It connects all these glands that we know are extremely significant. They call it the crystal palace, the Taoist. So this, this triangle here is what the, the higher Dantian is, the upper Dantian is. And it's responsible for the intuitive awareness. So our, and this may sound like, hey, the intuition is in the gut or not, but, but let's take it now that this is where the intuitive awareness comes. So when we receive an intuition or an insight, it's let's for now agree that it's coming through the, uh, the uh, upper Dantian, through this, the sixth sense, the third eye, the crown, then that's the area where we are communicating on this informational level that we can receive uh, and interact intuitively or psychically, let's say, yeah? In order for that part to be active, that we can actually manifest and attract things and, and uh, receive the proper intuition and communication on this level, five spiritual pr principles we have to live by. And I think that's very important because if any of these things we're not living by it, then let's forget about trying to manifest anything. So... Uh, the five spiritual principles must be in place before communication lines between the individual and or our higher self become open and fully operational. We will not connect with our higher self if we don't follow these five rules. So we must have purity of intention. We must be clear. When I talk to someone, I'm talking with full purity of intention. I don't have any hidden motives. I don't want to misguide them and mislead them to manipulate them to do something for me just for another reason, because whatever, that's not it. Purity of intention. We must have no hidden agendas. Um, we must surrender to the divine will. In other words, we, we're not doing this for selfish reasons and for me only or for egotistical reasons or whatever, or to, to gain more and more. It's really for the collective divine will of the universe and we are here part of that fulfilling that as well so it's connecting to that higher will as opposed to our ego will we must have complete trust and faith in success so believes and expects so we believe we're going to achieve this and we expect it to be happening because the the equation is like that if we follow these things then we expect success there is no doubt about it and finally, must have a quiet and receptive stillness of mind. So in other words, we, we don't let thoughts control us, but we are in, in command of our thoughts and our feelings. When we do that, then we can manifest. So that's, that's our, can be a part of our journey in life to perfect these and become better and, at them. And just follow them on, an, on a daily basis because it's, it's, it's issues that we, we, we express every minute of our life. So we can start becoming mindful of things like that. And that's when it activates that higher hard Okay, so that is the intuitive brain. The second one is the middle dantian. And that is covering the heart. And it's the empathic awareness. This is where we become empathic. So we have the intuitive awareness. And then we have the empathic awareness. So most empaths have this part. This is part of the radar or the receiver, super active. And um, it's the house of emotional or empathic feeling and the communication and awareness. So emotional communication is experienced as empathy within the heart. Uh, this empathy is the means by which uh, we will most frequently become aware of emotional components of our energetic blocks or imbalances. So we feel ourselves emotionally and we, we know where the issues are so we can heal ourselves. We can also connect with others on this level and then we can have a much more uh, healing and nourishing uh, kind of uh, interaction and communication. 
this is this is kind of the essence of the golden rule, you know, the, you know, the first rule of the universe. It's like you do to other people what you would like them to do for you, and that's kind of the empathic uh, empathic awareness. Uh, some people grow with it. The children have it active. I mean, they are so sensitive with this, and then they kind of it gets shut down more and more the more the older they get because society is not designed to to handle this. Of course, shock, disappointment, denial um, diminishes this gradually until we shut down that empathy because it brings us pain. Mixed messages, uh, parents telling us one thing and uh, we feel another thing and we don't know where to go and so on. So this kind of shut it down. Okay, so that's the middle Dantian, which is the heart. And then finally, the lower Dantian, which covers... It covers really from the navel all the way down through the reproductive uh, sacral area, perineum, this whole region, basically. Navel, second chakra and first chakra is the lower Dantian in this triple configuration. So that is the kinesthetic awareness mind. So now this is where we feel things on a, on a tangible level, on a physical level, on a pleasure level, on a... Um, sense sensible level touching uh, feeling and so on so it is the kinesthetic awareness so now we have the intuitive empathic and then kinesthetic and these three minds we want to make them one we want to become a, a single integrated person so you can see now how you can understand that some people are empaths some people are intuitive only some people are kinesthetic only because they rely mostly, they are residing in this area, whether it's the lower Dantian, the middle, or the upper. And uh, our ideal objective is to go, uh, to be, to bring all three together and be all of them. Okay. So basically, there are subtle feelings. Um, believe it or not, although many people are into the sensible physical realms, but they are not really connected with their organs. They're connected with, they're not connected with their body. In other words, they, they have to go to a doctor to tell them, yes, it's your, it's your kidney really that's bothering you, although they have a, a pain in the back, you know, and they know it, the sense of connecting with our inner feeling or feeling that the blood pressure is going high or feeling that there is a, a something wrong inside. We, Many of us are disconnected from that. Uh, it's almost like that body belongs outside of us for some reason, although it is a primary function of that uh, lower Dantian uh, kinesthetic sense. So picking up these variations in energetics and eating something and suddenly feeling that it's not, it, it drained our energy or dropped it or something, that, that is the kind of sense that is developed uh, once we connect with this. When we collect energy there, then we start increasing this awareness. Of course, we lose a lot of energy from that lower Dantian. So when the physical awareness is increased, uh, the feelings of the kinesthetic body happens naturally. And we start to feel, sense, smell, uh, hear things at a completely connected level. And even the sense of our physiology, we become more aware of it and clear with it. And that offers us ability to heal ourselves once this is activated in the right way in the in the ideal way that it is designed but most of the time it just becomes a pleasure center and that's about it ego survival just pleasure and so on and that's about what kinesthetic have become but in reality it's much more than just that it's it's serving it's the processor that is supporting our physiological physical uh, manifestation on this uh, three-dimensional world. And so it supports more things than just uh, ego and pleasure. Any questions so far? If at some point before we wrap up, if you could speak briefly on the matter of people who are not in trios and how, how they can work with other trios. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Thanks for bringing this up. Okay, here's, for instance, an earth quadrant and a fire quadrant and so on. So there will be a trio here. Uh, they could be a complete trio, but there could be extra people that, that are belonging to this uh, element, but they are not completing uh, a trio. This is the guardian. So in the guardian, for instance, they have three that are a trio and one 
extra, but it doesn't matter because so they will they will combine with them. They would work together like they complement complement the trio and work with an existing trio as many of them as possible. And then when the time comes and they get completed, like maybe two more people would join, then they will separate into their own trio. But for now, they will combine with an existing trio uh, and so on. So it will be an, uh, an elemental um, resource until the trio is complete. Now, once the trio completes, that three, three souls suddenly have this power of uh, activation that is beyond. However, that individual, until they complete an extra trio, are part of that as well. And they're contributed also to that. And most likely, you know how the universe will balance things by itself. So you'd have more water than earth. Or in our case, in uh, Aswan, we have more earth people than water. So we just ended up with a sandstorm. That's what's needed. That's what is providing the balance at that time. So we trust that process. So whoever is there, we focus first on the elemental quadrants. You know, everybody of that element just go there. And then from there, whoever can form trios, they do. And the remaining are with them, working together. Yeah, It's really not complex, if that is clear, if that makes sense. That definitely cleared things up. Um, if uh, I think to a degree, uh, and now just um, if people are joining onto the trio, it doesn't matter if what their role is, right? It can be multiple roles. Like two, like there's a guardian or whatever they feel guided to do, right? They don't need to change their role in any way. They they don't have to, but if if it reaches a level where it actually will complete a trio by having, uh, you know, by moving from one spot to another, then by all means, feel free if you're comfortable with it. But I'll tell you something. Like let's say somebody is really good, it, their nature is aligned with. Uh, guardian, you know, just uh, dealing, interfacing with dark stuff. You know, they know how to handle that or or deal with it as a matter of hygiene. Ideally, they would be a guardian. I mean, if you put them into the manifesting sphere, maybe they would be thinking about the protection things while they're in there. So why why do that? You know, everyone really has a natural uh, gift and ability that uh, we we work with it. However. It's not really like black and white and you have to change and otherwise it, let it flow. We flow naturally. Everybody goes where they are and things will complete gradually. And I think the more people will join, the more all these questions will uh, kind of go away. Like we, we achieved that in the past with all these uh, groups. Suddenly things, you know, start falling in place. But here you would have a tree or then you have two extra people waiting. The third person that comes in this earth element, then that is complementary completes it, then suddenly you will have two trios there. Meanwhile, okay, so there's five people there here, there's four, right? So we just flow with it as it comes. And most likely there is a wisdom in this kind of configuration. The universe knows how to put things together in the best way. 